Hi and welcome to another video. In this video we're going to take a look at IoT APIs. Before we look at those then, just want to remind you of user interfaces. Now a user interface is a, an interface to an application and most of the applications today are actually designed to be used by a, a person uh, hence they have a user interface. That interface is an interface to the application. So if you want to send an email, you open up an email client and that email client interfaces with a, an email application. If you want to send an SMS message, you open up an SMS client and that interfaces to a, an SMS application and lets you send text messages and the email one lets you send email messages. Now an API is an interface you designed to be used by other programs. It's not designed to be used by a person. So it allows a program to send commands to another program and to receive responses back from that program or from that application. So a normal interface, a user interface, allows a person to use an application service whereas an a application interface allows a computer or a program to use an application and a service. Now applications can actually have both a user interface and, and an API. In fact most of the common applications that we're using today like uh, Gmail have both. So originally they had a, a user interface designed to be used by a user and, and the developers have added an application interface designed to be used by another application. Now you might say why can't an application use the actual user interface. Well, in some cases it can, but it's it's not the best way to do it. To illustrate that, I want to show you this uh, web-based application. This is uh, an application that shows you the arrivals and departure departures from the local airport. Now, it's written to be used by a user. You can see the interface here, and as a user interface, it works perfectly well. Now, if I wanted to publish that. Uh, use an MQTT or I wanted to take that into an application then what I have to do is to take that data coming out of here which is formatted as a web page I have to strip out all the HTML formatting from it and extract the information that I want. The, the information I really want is the um, destination, the airline, the flight number and the details of the, of the flight scheduled and arrived etc. Now I did actually did a video on this and I did this and I took this data and I republished it using MQTT and most of the application involved actually reformatting, in other words taking the original format and stripping out all the HTML and getting back to the raw data. Now if there was an API for this and then maybe I actually didn't look when I when I did it, it was some time ago, then what would happen there is I would actually just go to a, a URL not this particular URL but another URL and it would send me the data not as formatted data like this but as a, a JSON object or uh, a, an object that I could easily consume into an application. So yes you can actually get an application to use a user interface but it's very very clunky and it's not the best thing to do. Now most of the APIs in use today are web-based APIs. They were designed to use the uh, HTTP protocol as I, I showed you just with that uh, airline example. And they're also REST-based APIs. Uh, REST is actually a design architecture which I don't intend to get into here. It's only really important if you are designing APIs rather than consuming APIs. Now with the Internet of Things most of the APIs will increasingly use the protocol used by the Internet of Things which is MQTT. Now what you tend to find is uh, most of the IoT or home automation devices uh, will use a combination of MQTT and HTTP. Uh, early devices use, use predominantly HTTP. Uh, newer devices use uh, either MQTT or HTTP and often they use both. Now regardless of the protocol all APIs require an endpoint. Now an endpoint is defined as the end of a communications channel and that's where the application sends requests to and, and gets responses from. In HTTP endpoints are provided by URLs and in MQTT they're provided by topics and we'll see that uh, shortly. Now this is a quick example taken from uh, Tasmota. Now Tasmota actually provides an HTTP API as well as an MQTT one and this is the HTTP, HTTP one and the endpoint is this here, you can see it at the bottom 
and here we're passing in um, parameters to turn the power on and off. You can see the power here, power on and power off. The percentage 20 is a, a space character. So we pass it as part of the URL. And that's typical of HTTP-based uh, APIs. Uh, the command is passed as the URL. It could also be sent, this is using a GET, uh, it could also be sent in the, as a data element using the POST command and, and that's used when we're sending JSON formatted data. Now there are lots of examples on the internet of REST based APIs that you can actually use to practice uh, using APIs but there aren't any for uh, IoT, there aren't any for MQTT and because of that uh, I created my own very very simple test API and what I simulated here was a, a switch, a light bulb and a temperature and humidity sensor and the API is available as an HTTP API and also MQTT API and using it you can get the status of the switch, the light bulb, you can turn it on, turn it off, you can set the timer etc. These are the basic commands you can do with this API. Now the API is actually a, a node red flow so you can actually download it and I'll make the flow available so you can download it and, and try it. And the idea of this test API was really for anyone wanting to practice using APIs and or for anyone wanting to cheat APIs and needed a sample API and they didn't want to actually buy hardware. You can simply buy the hardware, you can buy yourself a uh, a sun off switch and flash it, flash it with Tasmota and you've got yourself an HTTP API as well as an MQTT API that you can practice with. But this is a very simple test API that you can download and you can use. Now the devices can be controlled using HTTP and MQTT and this is an example of a, a command and this is using the HTTP one. Now the port number varies. I'll be when when I demonstrate it to you uh, shortly. I, I'm not using 8080 on my my test flow. I'm using a different port number, so yours might vary as well. And the root of the API is called my API, and then the switch is switch one is called one to switch one and bulb one to bulb one. And I pass the commands in the URL, and we'll, again we'll see that in in a second. And for MQTT, very similar, I use the topic my API and I use a format of command device. So we, my API command sensor one, and you can see it here, or switch one, and the state on and the state off. So that turns it on and off. Now with the MQTT one, you can actually send the commands as part of the topic, as I've done here, or you can send them as JSON encoded data. And I, I'll show you again an example of that in a second. So let's go on and, and take a quick look at using the uh, the test API. Okay, so this is the flow. I'm not going to take you through this in detail, but the top bit is the HTTP part and the bottom is the MQTT part. And here are the devices switch one, bulb one, and sensor one. And the only real changes you might need to make to this is the MQTT node. You need to adjust the broker you're using uh, I'll set it to use localhost in the in the flow download, but you'll need to set it to use the, the host you're using. And if you want to change the topic names, then you'll need to change the topic names as well. But uh, you might need to also change uh, that in the code, so be wary of changing any of that. Okay, now to test this, I can test it using HTTP, and if I just type in switch one, it gives me the status of the switch, and you can see it's currently off. I can change the state of that switch by using the command and I can turn it on and you can see the state is on. I can also do it with MQTT and here I've got a publish and I've got a subscribe MQTT there's a subscribe and you can see sorry there's a publish and there's a subscribe there so if I just repeat that and turn it, turn it off and then I go and look at the subscribe MQTT you can see here it's off and if I go and publish on it, 
there is it publishing on notice I have to use the blank uh, and empty message so be wary of that when you're using the uh, MQT uh, the mosquito publish and if I go and look at the subscribe node sorry subscribe you can see here the state is now on and if I refresh this and you can see the state is now on now you can control this API using both MQTT or HTTP the choice, the choice is yours now I'm not going to take you through all the others uh, there is a more detailed description on the website for both MQTT and uh, HTTP it gives you more details on using the API and more details on the commands that you can try and as I say I will make the flow available in the video description okay so that brings us to the end of the video I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you find it useful if you've got any comments on the, the video please leave them below if you like the video then click on the like button below if you'd like to get notified of new videos on the channel then click on the subscribe button and make sure you click the notification bell so that's it uh, until next time goodbye